Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast, where it's our goal to help you become the best financial advisor possible and drive the positive evolution of financial advice. On today's episode, we're continuing the conversation on how to nail the planning phase of an awesome advice business. So we've brought in XY legend and gun advisor, James Millard, to give us the sufficient funds story. As you scale your advice business, are you frustrated with the amount of compliance, paperwork, and staffing issues? Virtual Business Partners specializes in helping financial services firms in four areas, admin, power planning, bookkeeping, and marketing. Virtual Business Partners work with you to get your business offshore ready. This includes identifying what tasks need to be done locally and what functions can be managed offshore. Advisors find they can reduce back office costs by between 50 and 75% and significantly improve their task turnaround times. For more information, go to virtualbusinesspartners.com.au. All right, so I'm here with the one and only beach bum, uh, Jimmy Miller. <laughs> Mate, first question, is it true, because I, I heard a rumor that you for the last 12 months you've been in the Bermuda Triangle trying to uh, find out that all of the secrets and Jimmy Hoffer and all of that sort of stuff, is that true? <laughs> Not at all, mate. I'm, uh, I've been hibernating. I've been, I've bunkered down to, uh, to deal with, uh, all the things in my life, including business. Right. Okay. Well, I'm sure we'll talk a bit more yes. about that. Uh, thanks for joining me. We're, uh, this is part of the series on, uh, plan, produce, profit. So today we're talking all about planning, uh, with your business, how you set up your business plan. Uh, so, but before we get into that, I've got a few just sort of uh, quick ones for you, just for the, uh, anyone that's been living under a rock that doesn't know the superstar that is uh, James Millard. Uh, time, so how long has your business been going? So I became self-employed with two others four years ago, um, but one year in the new format, which is just me with, with my team. And your blog. And the blog. blog's three years old, but uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's about a year uh, of... Uh, a vacant space at the moment because we've been uh, building a business. It's, uh, yeah, that tends to happen. Mm. Uh, so your team, so what does your team look like right now? Uh, the team is me as the, uh, the only client-facing member of the team and then we've got Laura who does a lot of, a bit of everything. She's kind of head of client services, client experience. She looks after a lot of the initial client conversation um, does a lot of marketing, does a lot of just all sorts of helping me behind the scenes. A lot of project work. If we're building a website or doing anything like that, she'll she'll coordinate a lot of that part of it. And then we have uh, one of, one team member in the Philippines through Five Elk. Oh, okay. Uh, how much time? Because I know you've got a young family, a couple little sprouts, a couple I little do. beach bumps. Uh, what, so what, how much time do you spend in an average week working in or on your business? It's it's like twelve hours a day, at least six days a week, right? Um, but those those hours are not uh, eight till eight or or anything like that. It's it's often it might be six till five, six till seven, and then the full day, and then it might be midnight or, or one a.m. It depends on what's going on. <laughs> Seriously, I, and I and I frame clients up for that as well because. Um, if you don't tell them, you're going to email them at 1 a.m. and then they get one. It's kind of weird. <laughs> Haven't you heard of uh, email scheduling? I think uh, what they call that boomerang. That's what I do. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just let it go. But yeah, I mean, we, we do that a little bit, but sometimes, uh, sometimes I let them go later. That's, that's okay because I mean, we, I mean, we've got we've got our client base to the point where they really know us fairly well, yeah. um, and young family craziness. And all, all the nuts that are going on behind the scenes. Um, they understand. Yeah, they get it. Yeah. Cool. What's your revenue? Uh, we did 350 grand last year between home loans and planning, um, which is pretty much what we did the year before with three of us. So we just, last year was about consolidating. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, we've had a kind of a serious month on month lift in the last three to six months. So, Things are getting a bit crazy now. We're just trying to figure out how we go forward. Awesome. Well, I'm keen to dive into that a little bit deeper, but um, 
But just one last one quickly before we get into that. Uh, what's your, who's your ideal client and what is your, what is your solution? So ideal client is the young single couple family even. Um, but typically they are, you know, it might be the, he's, he's the, you know, they might be manly based. We're, we're, national so we kind of do a lot of virtual meetings and we've got about 60 percent of our clients are national um but if you want to get specific do you consider that, like um sydney on the right side of the bridge is that considered national or is that's that interstate yeah definitely. <laughs> um so we've got the you know the 30 year olds that are that are just figuring things out they're on good money they've saved they've saved plenty they've either bought a place or or not um they may be thinking about rent investing getting the foundations in order, doing the spending plan, all of that type of thing. Um, they've all got big goals. Uh, and, and so our model that kind of fits with that is we, our entry point is what we call our defined sufficient meaning. So sufficient funds being the business name, sufficient essentially meaning not, not a low cost or meager lifestyle. It's you defining your ideal life. Yep. Um, and so I kind of overlay a fairly heavy coaching element to the planning and, and broking. Yep. Um, so, and that's how we explain it to clients. So we do a lot of, um, so that first meeting, uh, which is the entry point with really, it's $220. Yep. And we'll do it online or face to face if we can, um, right. essentially, obviously depending on location. Um, and we'll get a bit of info up front. We'll do the fact find and get some dot points up front. They'll do it for us online. And then it's just an editable PDF. And we'll then use that 90 minutes to go really deep on goals. Yep. So really dig deep on not just ticking the box of figuring out what they want, but going further and challenging them on it and making sure it's really crystal clear. And so by the end of that meeting, we give them a really, I mean, they've got the foundations in from our perspective of, so they can use that to then make those money decisions. Yep. Um, and so you do, all, but you do holistic planning, like fit in the lifestyle element. How do you, you achieve those goals? Cover everything. Also, a bit of mortgage, mortgage work as well. What's that sort of split look like from a business? Um, being like rep, from a revenue, revenue is twenty five percent. Broking. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. So it's a it's a smaller element, and we've toyed with we're kind of toying with what the options of what we do with it. To be honest, um, it's it, it's not that hard, but it is time consuming. So yeah. if you have the right team behind you. It, it's, mm. it makes sense. Yep. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say to anyone go out and start it if you don't know what you're doing. I'd, I'd spent a lot of time managing teams of brokers. I hadn't done it myself until we started Yolo, the previous business. Yep. Um, but managing teams and in and around that property world and the and the mortgage world for a very long time, and so I knew exactly what to do. It's just the ins yep. and outs of it. Yep. Um, that would be the only way I'd ever recommend trying to do both because mm. otherwise it, it does sound crazy um, yeah. and it still is sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I know that that's something that I get from, uh, from other, you know, mates that have, or colleagues, you know, people that we've, we've worked with, with, uh, with clients before that hard to find that line between the broking and the, especially when it comes to client engagement, but especially for people that start from the broking side, maybe more so yeah. that they're going, well, where do I, where does the planning come in? Maybe it's a bit easier when you start from the planning side and then just go, well, there's a thing that needs to happen. Exactly. Yeah. And I think, I think for us, I mean, you do it right. You refer it out and, and you draw the line and then you, I guess you're giving, you're giving your clients direction to a point around their banking structure. Yeah. Um, and, and then a loan simply fits into it. Um, yeah. I think it's easy to go the other way, but coming this way, maybe not so much. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of change in that space as well, right? Yeah. So tell us, uh, to give us, give us a bit of your background and, and story. Touch on a few uh, interesting points there. Uh, so, well, look, I mean, if you if you want to hear the business stuff, we'll get there quickly. I, I'll give you the quick version. So, we a long, long time ago, I did a road trip around the states. I did a semester in Canada, um, met up with four mates, and we did a road trip. And this is this is where the business name came from. So, we ended up. Um, in uh, we bought a Chrysler the Baron, one of those beat up old wooden panel station wagons, and road trip the states. The night, one of the nights before we were leaving, we're all out on the beers, and one of the boys pulled out the insufficient funds slip from the ATM. Uh, and a few days later, we printed up a hundred t-shirts and a hundred tracker caps to our new surf brand, insufficient funds. Yeah, and so that was the starting point uh, of that road trip. We sold shirts, partly funded our, our trip. Um, 
our plan was to never work a full time job in our lives, and uh, but <laughs> and and you know sell to Hurley. Clearly, and, clearly your your twelve hour, <laughs> six days a week. Uh, you, that Things now. have changed, yes. <laughs> um, but that was where the idea of sufficient funds kind of came from. I was looking back on all that, and and mm. then and it, and so where the coaching element works with our clients so well is we've been through so much of what our clients are probably about to go through. Um, yeah. I've got some older clients, and I, you know, I love working with older clients as well. But you know, as, as you have always bashed. Uh, into me, the idea of uh, having a niche makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and so we finally adapted that and done it properly. Uh, and so, yeah, personally, I've got, you know, the the background was grew up in the corporate world with a fairly large boutique business and um, I was at the point where I was managing big teams, managing a big client base, doing all sorts of holistic advice, but it was kind of, close enough to the top to see that it wasn't the place I wanted to spend my future in, but not close enough to actually direct it. And so we made the leap. That was the, the leap in 2014-ish, started the business early 2015. and, and took You only live once, right? <laughs> Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. And, and that's still a message that I, I would uh, implore you to adapt. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, very good. So tell me about clearly. So you, you got you, so you started YOLO uh, working with a couple of partners, and then you recently restructured to to under the sufficient funds brand, working uh, sort of running things you, your yourself. I know you, you're still with a good um, relationship with the, with uh, Blackie and Maz mm. Legends. Shout out, boys. Um, uh, but so. What, so when you when you planned your if we focus on sufficient funds, so you sort of you had a couple of bites or almost in, in, in terms of the fact that I know that you've changed a few things with entering with setting up sufficient funds. Yeah, tell me about that journey. How you how you planned what the service offering was going to look like, what the uh, you know what the process was going to be. How did how did you approach all of that, and yeah. what were the key sort of yeah, actually, I'll ask you that one in a minute. Sure. So um, I guess I had the longer-term view of I think my strengths are the coaching rather than just the advice. And I think, um, you know, I can be a mentor for my younger clients. I can take them through what we've been through. And I guess the Mate, old... that sounds super expensive. <laughs> Which part? The mentoring. <laughs> mentoring for cheap. Oh, my God. Oh, I thought you meant for us to run it. <laughs> Because it is. <laughs> um, so I, I guess the idea is that coach model is where we where we're going. We're not there yet, but the idea is have the book, have the course, have um, you know a lot of automation around that entry level, and then provide advice at a premium level. And and that advice, you know, we're not there yet, but that that is where it will cost a lot more and it'll be wrapped around some fairly high touch type services, whether it's just the cash flow stuff, but also the, you know, what are you working through and that type of thing. Um, I don't, I don't have plans to be a life coach. I, I think you can't be both. Mm. I think it'd be very hard to do them both. Well, it is going to be heavily money focused, but it'll just be using those, you know, the, the crossover between life and money decision, which is yeah. obviously so blurred. So, um, that's where we're going. And then I think taking a step back, the book, the initial idea around the book was that's when I started the blog is start blogging to fill those chapters. So there's, you know, there's 35,000 words of complete mess at the moment, which I need mm. to get in and, and bring it together and write a lot more before it gets shredded by the editor. And <laughs> as you know, um, and bring it all out, but the steps there. And as I was working through that process and, and also thinking about the business at the same time, we started to look at what are, what steps did we go through? What have we done personally? What have we had to deal with? And what do our clients go through? And and so that's that kind of journey that we map out for clients from insufficient to sufficient funds. Yeah. And there's three. There's there's kind of five steps. Um, it's define, which is figuring out your goals and all of yeah. that. Developing, so starting to build habits and so forth. Decluttering getting rid of all the crap, automation and so forth there. Yep. I'm trying to remember them all. <laughs> Defend. You're like, I hope you forget one. <laughs> yeah. 
defend, um, which is, you know, a combination of things like obviously the insurance and being protected and making sure that all that's in order. But, yep, being able to, being able to prepare to make sacrifices when you need to. Um, and, you know, a lot of that came off the back. Some of the stories came off the back of what we went through last year, bringing Eden into the world and mm-hmm. having, uh, having to drop everything for three months between Tash being in hospital for a month before it and then a month yeah. after it and all of that. So, you know, that was a point where I just had to stop, um, which was nuts because we literally just started this business. Yeah. Um, but three months went by and, and yeah, I was apologising to clients left, right and centre and thankfully we got good relationships. So yeah. that was all okay. Um, but that was the defend element and then finally deliver. Yeah. Which kind of makes, makes sense by itself. But I think the idea there is really time to let it flow. Um, that's where you, you'll never be perfect and sufficient yeah. funds in retirement. Mm. It's, you can have that almost immediately if you go fast enough and you get it right quick enough. Yeah. But it's that, that is then the ongoing process of making sure that it's still ticking and mm. working. And most people, especially younger people, it's not about retiring. It's just about having freedom to, to do what they want. I, I find, in fact, people, most people are anti that. They just want to be able to have the flexibility to you know, if go work for a charity for a year or go travel Europe for a year if Big they time. want to and then yeah, and then do the the, the thing. So so how did you so you cut you come up with your with your steps and it sounds like you mentioned you've got this engagement process, paid intro meeting which I'm keen to explore uh in, in a little bit more detail as well. But how did you go about that um structuring your you know the elements and the steps? What was the did you use a was there a coaching program or a framework or how did you so so far, it's literally just been plucked out of the air and, and as part of, you know, the story and, and bringing it all together and deciding on the elements that I, I thought needed to be in there um, from a planning perspective, but also, like, we don't, we don't necessarily, I think it's important to note, we don't necessarily follow those identical steps when we take, it's not, this is where you'll start as a client and we're going to go through this planning process in the first 12 months or anything like that. It's, yeah. you're going to need elements of all of this this is probably the journey you're going to go on or something like that. And these are all parts of what will probably arise. And as a result, this is the advice you're going to need right. um, type thing. So, the, so yeah, I mean, that's, that, that kind of highlights everything that, that's needed or that might be needed or that for, for the people, the journey they're going to go through, the steps they're going to have to take mm. uh, and the, the shit they're going to have to deal with. Yeah, ultimately. Um, but then taking a step back, we still follow a fairly traditional process from an advice perspective is after that defined sufficient meeting, we quote them to work together, uh, yep. build a plan and then an ongoing service. Uh, and how do you charge? So we charge, um, we give them a fixed price quote, but we do take commission on insurance. Oh, yeah. Sweet, sweet comms. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Remember and, the time I talked to you out of taking farm percentages? Oh yeah, it's great, and that's it. We're, we're, now we're, we're fully fee only and haven't haven't looked back. But Love your work. I, it's a uh, it's definitely a it's a journey, and it's Big you time. know it, it's it means that you you have to charge more and you get more pushback and uh, for sure people go like I said, someone's ten thousand bucks and they go that and they say ten thousand. Bucks. And then it's like, well, yeah, but like, well, I could say, I could say five thousand bucks, and then I could take seven thousand dollars of insurance. Comp and be happy with that, mm. uh, but yeah, you know. And so, yeah, and for where we're at, and and also the fact that we wrap in the mortgages into the process, um, yeah, we can handle those clients at the lower level, but we have to figure out a way of helping them from a planning perspective. Yeah, and so that's that's our challenge: is do we do we drop it at some point? Probably. Yeah. Um, but I would, yeah, it's a work towards rather than a just wait. I think yeah. work until you have to do something. Else. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, I mean, we're prepped. We're prepped for that if we had to. Um, but it's, you know, at the moment, it's where it makes sense. We we do absolutely do feed the service if they're super low, um, you know, low premiums and stuff, and it's not going to make so much sense that they can't afford it otherwise. But we're helping them with the home loan anyway. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll do it. Yeah. The importance of getting protected. Mm. And, and actually making sure that something's in place, As, even from, you know, I, I mean, I, we talk to clients as young as, you know, early 20s usually, mm. that one little slip up and they never work again. And Yeah. You know, I don't have to tell you that. Mm. But, yeah. Maybe the unfortunate, I think the unfortunate thing about the fee-only basis is that it does not prefer a few people out for 
for insurance. Like we can deliver it for two thousand bucks, but we can only do it because we're already charging five thousand bucks. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there, yeah, I think that that element is it. Yeah, it's, it's an unfortunate consequence. Although that being said, I think the technology, uh, you know, as technology evolves, sure. then I think for it sure. shouldn't be for us to, to need to do a lot of that stuff. I think, um, yeah, so I think that, mm. that will come. Yeah. So with your with your service offerings, do you have are there uh, sort of levels or are there so you quote so it's sort of like yeah. a, a bespoke to a degree, but are there different? To a degree, we're we're getting to the point where it's going to be packaged, and I think we're we're kind of at that point now. We've built we've built out the cash flow service where we hadn't really done that before. Yeah. Um, cash flow previously was work on the budget, get a clear budget, and get banking structure coming off the back of it, and then review it, but not monitor it. And yeah. so we're now building into that using MoneySoft the the ongoing service. Oh yeah, and so we're going to have kind of three levels i guess so if we're, we're doing a plan for a client and that is a holistic plan usually um there'll be cash flow as part of it and so they've got the option to from an ongoing perspective it'll be three steps so one is full face-to-face quarterly reviews all the ongoing reporting and so forth um the middle option will be a virtual option oh yeah and and the bottom option is kind of more DIY. Um, so yeah, we've learned, we've done a bit of work with Steve Crawford and uh, looked at that stuff with him. Um, but we're building it out and tweaking it and making it kind of work for us. Nice. Yeah, I think the service packages are so. I think it's so valuable from a from a clarity perspective from a client point of view. I find that yeah. we've been doing it and we've changed our packages. <clears throat> but since I since I started doing it in 2015. That uh, yeah, like it, it. What it means, what you give up is that you're giving up a bit of the the flexibility to to adjust things. And it always means if you've got you know if you've got clear packages, <clears throat> um, people are always some people will be uh, like more take less time to mm. fit into the framework, and some people will take more time. And you've got to yeah, you've got to sort of suck that up, and I uh, I don't know that there's a the solution. What we do is that if someone takes heaps of time, we just say to them, "Hey, you've taken heaps of time. Now we're going to charge you more." Yep. Uh, we, and and I've never had a single client push back on that. Mm. Um, Are you they, guiding them at the front end into what package they should be in? We only have one package. You got the now. one. Yeah. yeah, we just have one. Yeah. Although I'm about to have a because I've I've got one, and then for people that are really complex. Or people with lots of money, yeah. then I've just been going, oh, it's double, yeah, okay. uh, or it's more. Like, it depends. So, yeah, I think. Sure. So, going forward, I'm thinking about doing like because we've been doing a bit around the like the tech startup, like the new, okay. the new rich, so the yeah, yeah. thirty year old, yeah, for sure. Years, where there's, you know, when you're trying to trying to deploy, you know, four or five million bucks, there is. There's a lot of options a lot of time that totally. goes into that. So we're about to sort of step that up. But it, again, it won't be really something that we, I think we will just pick and just mm-hmm. say that's the option. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what we do one package for people. Yeah. Now, we started, when I started, so we were on that the early stage for the mm-hmm. uh, no comp on the insurance. So we split out the thing and then it was like the, we had a super, super package, super insurance. I remember all those crazy packages. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know how you did it. Yeah, I don't know. Well, it was yeah, it was it worked. It, yeah, that was the evolution, yeah. right? So from the evolution, because I remember when you posted that on the on the Facebook page, and it was like super detailed and so much to it. But you could see that you'd taken a lot of the complication out of it over time. Yeah. Well, and now I just have one streamlined. Yeah, one package, package, one fee, and the only add-on is insurance, really. Mm. So. Good. <laughs> but I, f- I find that that for, for clients that they just go, oh yeah, that's the thing. It gives them clarity on what to expect. Now I tell them the fee before they come in, yeah, which is which I found to yeah, be okay. for conversions. Yeah. Uh, so it allows you. I think it allows you to explain that. I was just chatting to Jess and Glenn from from Fox and Hair just before, and they their packages as well. And it's the same that you can put it on the website, you can put it in your marketing material, and people go, oh yeah, like, like they can almost self select. Yep. And you can be like the Netflix or the stand where, and, and from our perspective, where we want to go with that is just be upgrade, downgrade, opt out, 
It's, yeah. it's super flexible. They're never going to leave, but yeah. you know, they will, they might, but mm. most of the time they don't. And, and when you set it up that way with all the flexibility in the world, it, it just makes sense to them as well. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. So tell me, so you put, sounds like you've got a clear engagement process with the paid meeting. How, how, how have you evolved? How has that sort of evolved and how have you, how have you ended up? What are the learnings along that journey? So, um, well, I mean, it just, it just came down to the fact that we were, cause we're, we, we do work remotely. Um, and I work from home a lot of the time. We do video meetings for interstate, but we're seeing clients face to face in Sydney without an office. So it's either in the city, in Manly or somewhere in between. And, yeah. and we were just killing time. Um, I actually didn't spend a lot of time doing it. I just decided not to do it anymore and, and start to charge for me, um, yep. which just instantly got rid of the tie kickers. Yep. Um, I've always had a fairly high conversion rate with those meetings. And it's, I think it's because I put so much effort into the relationship of it and digging deeper on those goals. And it's always been, that it just comes naturally to me. I think some of it yeah. isn't necessarily coachable, but it's just how I am. So yeah. when we have those discussions, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just naturally interested. I want to, I want to see what makes people Super tick. Quiet. But when you ask those questions, <laughs> people, people suddenly said you care. Yeah. Right? And, and so once you've got that, they're, they're generally signing up, but mm. it's just nicer not to be driving to Penrith or, you know, somewhere like that to yeah. figure it out. Yeah. You know, you're getting paid for it. And, and as soon as they pay, they're like, oh, should I come to Manly? I, we could probably get there. Maybe we could do it on a Saturday morning. Is that cool? Like, we'll do a Saturday meeting. You know, we'll go to the breakfast and have, like, these defined special meetings are fairly relaxed. Yeah. And most clients are happy to do it wherever. Yeah. Um, and I'm definitely happy to do it. We've done it, like, there's a there's an RSL that's brand new right near us called the Diggers, um, which is up on the hill near Freshie and it looks over Curl Curl Beach. Oh nice. Uh, and there's no one there on a Saturday morning. Yeah. And so uh, big tables, plenty of room, no one around. It's awesome. Yeah, nice. So we've done a few meetings there. Um, one of our really good clients just came on board recently. Um, and we did we just did a meeting in the back of the diggers. Um, so things like that. We're fairly flexible with that stuff. Um, but what we've learned, um, the charging instantly gets rid of the tie kickers and makes sure that people are actually committed. Yeah. We send them the fact line, I send them the fact line before it. Um, and that gives us some dot points on their goals as well. So we use that then to kind of, so Laura will take whatever they give us, map it out so that I can then build on it in the meeting, which is typing straight into the, yeah, just the, the Google doc. So pull back line before the, before the session. Not a massive one, so we build on it later. Um, yeah. But it's 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 detailed enough. So we, I mean, we tell them to ignore the super insurance because we're going to research it anyway. Um, tell us what your member number is. But other than that, it's just getting assets, liabilities, yeah. um, basically, oh, yeah. Yeah, not full fact find. And then we we build on it and send it out for signing afterwards. Right. Okay. Cool. And and yeah, I think it's a, a funny thing that when you put the, you put the value up, and then the people automatically they put the value up as well where i think the more you be told oh, yeah i'll come to you oh yeah i'll do this you know you want you start working outside the scope and i know that's something we've been you know found a bit recently uh ray coming into the business and uh he's more i'm a bit more because i'm a bit more time stretched so i'm just like in place well i'm like well no that's it but he would be at like he try and bend the the process a little bit to cater for people but they end up wasting mm. like wasting your time or being difficult yeah. or not doing the things they're not the sort of clients yeah. that you want to work with so i think it's i think it's a great move like how that you know you're you you're giving yourself authority as the the leader because you need to do that to have mm. any sort of successful oh. advice relationship sure. anyway absolutely so yeah we went through the the process of starting with we'll do your mortgage we'll do your insurance we'll do you we'll just do an investment plan and we'll just do this and it was easy but yeah. that's all we knew and i was doing that for two or three years yep. um and you just end up completely scattered every day you get it done mm. and and you make it work and clop it but it is a lot harder to manage client expectations and deliver and consistently uh you know you, you're constantly bouncing from one step to another with clients and, and so we went through that process and yeah i mean pair it back make it clear Define it. Mm. 
and, and just have one, that one entry point to the business. So we'll do risk only advice as an entry point if, if that makes sense to do it, if that's really what they need, but usually we push them to the defined sufficient meeting instead. Yeah. Um, another benefit that that's given us is from a mortgage broken perspective, all the time clients will come in and say, well, I don't know if I want to buy or invest, buy to live, owner occupied or investment. Yeah. I've got the deposit, I'm ready to go. But for me in Sydney, I'm at 200 grand, it's taking me out to the Northwest. I really want to live in the inner West. Mm-hmm. What do we do? And instantly that's, we have a defined fit to find sufficient meaning. We go through it. Yeah. We figure it out. Yeah. I think it's, it, I think it as well that, and I had had previously in, before I started Pivot World, we would work with clients and they'd come in with the, an issue and, and it's like, well, I've got to, I need to fix up my super or that would be the, the selling point that the trigger that did something. And, you know, that can, it can work. But it, it also is a much more difficult way. And it, so you end up, you don't really understand the client that well, which makes it difficult. Then you can't identify because naturally that, you, you know, you're, if you're a good advisor, then you're, you're able to go, oh, that, what, oh, there's a consideration there. Oh, you don't know IP on your occupied. Oh, when was the last time you reviewed your mortgage? Or uh, what about that? Oh, you need to, and if they all sort of tie in together. So if you're, if you're doing that, yeah, in a more, you're getting a deeper understanding of the client situation and it allows you to sort of triage the things that are, that are yeah, going to be to, to work uh, better for them. To and, them so. and, and I mean, we, we've always had that philosophy of like, if I don't know you, I can't help you and, and just really dig. And, and, and it's the way of selling that first meeting as well is you just explain that you guys should not be making financial decisions until you're crystal clear on why you're doing it yeah. and, and what it's going to do for you. Absolutely. And that, that is very powerful. Like we've, I've had clients in tears at the end of those meetings or a little bit, not too much. <laughs> that <laughs> happens all the time, mate. But like happy tears, thinking about, she's like, holy, we've never, we've never sat down and written out our goals like this. We've never thought about it like this. Wow, now it all makes sense. And they don't always go that well, but sometimes they do. And you, you've just spent a lot of time not talking about money. And the next step is you tell them it's going to be five or six grand or whatever, and they pay it straight away. Not yeah. even a question. Yeah, I think it's one of the. I've got a mate, Duncan Fish. He runs a, a company called the Engaging Executive, which is sort of like, uh, you know, like you know, personal communication skills, but mm. mainly for more introverted people yeah but he taught he's a behavioral psychologist and super switched on when it comes to uh are you working yeah, with that that sort of stuff we're actually uh we've got the same business coach so we're in a coaching group together yeah yeah so uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i am an introvert i am just taught myself out of it i could have i could have used, I could have used his program uh when i was struggling through you know 10 years ago but you, you sort of learn the skills but he actually talks about his his functions. He talks yeah. about the relationship building, and I, I won't even try to do it because I won't get it right. But he talks about basically where it's like you talk about the weather and chit chat and small talk and all of that sort of crap. But the, the and then it's like this reverse pyramid. And the last thing is uh, when you're getting into the whys and the motivations. And he tells his story about how he asked his taxi driver while he was driving taxis and then he ended up going back to India and started a business or something. Yeah. Um, but it was all because he was like, well, why is that important to you? And I think that those goal sessions, it allows you to really get into that. For sure. Uh, and, and, and then you're build, automatically you're building deep relationships because you're getting to know people's true motivations. You're not talking about the weather anymore or the super fund or yeah. the... You know the, the other thing, it's, uh, it's, it's really the, the elements that are going to... Yeah, like allow you to deeply understand someone, and it's only when they, you know, know, like, and trust. They say you need to know um, to yeah. to, uh, to to get the rest. So I think that's it. That's a clear clear linchpin. And for those out, if anyone's thinking about doing this, like the the reason it's worked so well for us recently is you, you're actually separating it, and you're not talking about money. Like, yes, at the end you have to bring it in, or they'll never pay you for a financial plan. But you've yeah. got to link it all up. But the starting point in a good hour of that hour and a half is is no money talk, no money talk. Apart from maybe saying, well, how much is that going that going to cost you? Yeah, um, what do you, you want to do? Yeah, it? but the that part of it and comp- just making it completely separate, even though you're the financial advisor. Firstly, it surprises them, but it's uh, yeah, definitely makes them makes them a lot more engaged. 
Awesome. And so tell me, so you're, you're 12-ish months um, in. What's, the, what's changed since, just since you, since you started? Um, uh, mate, we, we're seriously changing all the time. More um, about the service model, so yeah. like the, the advice. So, so that everything I've just talked about with the, I mean, the defined species means we've been adapting that over the last six months, probably since January. Um, we've always, we've charged, we've charged for them since we started, um, but we weren't always doing them. Yeah. And so it wasn't becoming consistent. Now, now that I'm seeing, you know, I'm doing a, probably one a week now, um, it just gives you the ability when you've got that momentum to, to properly build it out and test it. So that yeah. was the, the other thing I was finding when we, when we didn't have as many clients coming in, it was, and we're doing a bit of everything. Yeah. You're not doing Must the same thing months. twice. Yeah. It, it, you might do it once a month, um, you know, an insurance application once a month or twice a month rather than every week. And so even just that part of that process and smoothing that part out has been something that's come with the momentum, the consistency that we've got now. Yeah, it gives you a real opportunity to see where, where yeah. are the issues, where are the opportunities. Yeah. And but that goes back to the niching idea, and I, I can't believe I'm telling you how good this is now. But <laughs> the, the like, if you're only doing one thing, you get very good at it, right? Yes. And even if you don't have a heap of clients, if you've just started the business, you're just doing the same thing for all of those clients. Basically, without yeah. without it being cookie cutter, you're following similar processes. So, yeah, it's the same process. I know that for us, that we have different clients, different advice. Yeah, but the but the process is uh, the process is always the same, and that is mm-hmm. really what allows you to drive efficiency in the back end with the guys. I know, you know, we've had a, a couple of people join to on those like CSO client success admin side, yeah. and it's only by having mm-hmm. one process for every single client for sure. that they're able to we're able to build it out with all the tools to to tell them what to do but then they can walk in day one and say oh step one oh you file that there do that like that mm-hmm. uh, yeah. and i should do it so yeah it also stops all that shoulder tapping right so you know exactly. you're not getting hit yeah, up for it mm-hmm. for sure and i think that that's it's partly the packages we were talking about packages before that ties in with yeah. that, that you can have different process per package if you if you need to but then again, it's 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 crystal clear, and you can. Well, the other part is the client experience that you can give a consistent client experience and optimize optimize that, uh, and ultimately it, it means that you can get it's more. You can either charge less or have a better margin than if you're trying to do self managed super fund one day, a business owner another day, exactly. insurance life insurance only the next day. That it's 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 a constant sort of uh, changing things up, and it's very difficult be efficient unless you've got a really big business where you can say bob does the, there's a team that just does one thing yeah, yeah sally does the mm-hmm. does the rest so tell me what um uh, if you it's a bit hard i suppose that you that you're only 12, 12 months in but what would you have done differently if you could if you could if you could go back uh i'd spend a bit more time on the model building it Building it, building those packages out, and and just be getting really clear and not doing so much on the fly. So I'm naturally I I like the challenge, and I think as a result of that, I I don't over engineer anything, and but but that leaves me scrambling, <laughs> right? No, as but I don't mind that, <laughs> and and I actually I actually enjoy it. I was fixing up an SOA right before I called you before, uh, and the client was in the waiting room like it was yeah. but just things like that I, that's that doesn't bother me that's a nap that's how i kind of kind of thrive but that does lead to naturally not not engineering things to the point that they should mm. be and so from a process perspective we're getting a lot better at this is how we do it every single time yeah uh, plus it means that you have you have to do it yourself it's very difficult to put your team under that sort of pressure to say Oh yeah, the person's in the waiting room. Can you just tidy up that thing? Uh, yeah. Like with someone and blow a gasket. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly right. So uh, yeah, we're working on that part. Um, but other things we do differently. Um, I mean, you hear this a lot, but I would hire earlier. We we made the mistake of canning our when we when we were wrapping up Yolo and moving from three partners to me. Um, I didn't think I'd be up for taking on that extra, and, and she was on part time at the time resource. 
Um, and this, this is through Vidal in the Philippines. And we, we, like, it was literally a month later, I turned around and hired that. And, and so we lost the one we had and then got another one and then another process went through. And so mistakes like that of just thinking, of thinking the worst as far as cash flow, cash flow and being, like, I was super nervous about whether we were going to be able to pull it off with Tash still not working and mm. personally needing to pull money out of the business to live because um, Tash was on maternity leave and all of that side of things. So, yeah, um, yeah there, was a, there was a balancing process there and all of a sudden it was very clear that we could, we could put more on. And, and we're at the point now where we probably need to be putting at least one CSO role on and mm. maybe bring a mortgage broker in and then potentially look at an advisor um, within the next six to 12 months. It's just, we just, we're kind of, I was mapping it out on the weekend and just working out what those roles exactly look like and yeah. how we're going to fill them yeah. and which one comes first. It's a difficult, it's a very difficult one. I think that the team, once you get your service model nailed and, and plan around that, it's, it's the team is the next, the next real challenge or something we've been working through in the last uh, year, but we we you do all these things and you do all this work and then you start building this momentum and then yeah then you have to scramble to do the work with the team and then it's hard to find time to hire it's hard to find time to train. Sure. I know that for us last year from July we were crazy busy and we're like crap we've got uh, we need to hire someone we've got enough money that we can hire someone but we didn't it takes time mm. to find good people as well. Yep. You said you had you know. Um, False start with the uh, with was that you or, or yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 uh, yeah and then and then so it, uh, you know th- then you have to reset and I know with, with Luana joined us in she started in January but we started we started looking we started recruiting for her in I think it was August or September yeah and then you find them and then you know it's uh, for sure yeah so it's a, it's a it's, it's, it's a, a weird, difficult balance. And, and for us, it's a little bit different. And I don't know if it's positive or negative as far as the pool of people that could be out there. But being being remote and planning on staying remote at this point in time will be essentially it could be the army of stay-at-home parents. Yeah. Right? And it's those people that, that have been in the industry. They know what they're talking about. They don't need to be essentially trained. They're not probably not maybe looking for progression, at least for that CSO type role at the moment. Mm. Um, but they know what they're talking about. Yeah. And they don't want to go back to an office. They've got kids to pick up in the morning and so forth. So we're thinking, how do we tap that? Yeah. Uh, so we, we just got to be a bit more creative, I think, around I think talk. there are a bunch of services out there that do that these days. There, isn't there one for like Facebook group, Beaches, Mom and Beaches Mums? Oh, like that. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got to be careful. You trim carefully in those mums groups. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Indeed. Uh, cool, man. Well, look, I, that's great. I think, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of good tips for planning. What do you think? What's the one most important thing that someone needs to get right to plan an epic service proposition? Um, make sure it, it really relates to who you are as, as the business if you're, or, or the advisor. If it's just you and you're just starting out, get really clear on, on who you are, why you're doing it, and then bring it all together. Have a good backstory um, and make it make sense so that, so that you're literally living the life that you want to live while you're helping the clients do the same thing. Love it. Cool. And uh, a couple of quick ones. Biggest, biggest oops moment or stuff up? Oh, have you ever made a mistake? <laughs> <laughs> over and over and over again. Um, no, we don't do this. We don't make the same mistake twice usually. Yeah. It's uh, definitely, definitely the hiring, the hiring stuff. So just like letting, letting someone go when we should have just kept them and then building from there. Yeah. Best piece of advice you ever received? Uh, just go for it. The, like, the, oh, good question. Might just be. do it? That might be copyrighted, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, I guess, look, it's being self-employed, you, you freak out about a lot of things and then you've got to balance your life as well and you're trying to bring it all together. The, like, the understanding that if you just give it a crack, most of the time it's going to work out. And yeah, so leap right in and get it done. 
back yourself, lean in, love awesome. it. Top tip for team? For building a team? Just, uh, well, for, I mean, for us, it's been make sure we find people we trust. Like Laura, I can trust her to, to work remotely uh, and she'll get it done. It's, you know, whatever hours she needs to do, the work's done. Um, so find people that you can trust, especially if you're trying to build a remote team um, and, and businesses like 5 that you can trust to do it all behind the scenes that, that kind of take the time off you. Awesome, man. Last question. What is your spirit animal? <laughs> Dolphin. <laughs> when true Northern Beaches style, Mr. Miller, thank you very much for joining us, mate. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Ben.